In this video, I never played the first division, just so you know. And in this video, I save the entire chain of command and the entire city of DC while wearing shoes two sizes too small for my feet because, I mean, look at this. I mean, look, everything else is in proportion, but then the shoes are like kind of small. Like these are kids' shoes. Are these women's size eight? What is this? Would you like to know more? How about... immediately right off the bat. Do you know why I am addicted to this game and feel so immersed? There's no activism or agenda of the political kind or any other kind of agenda. But some games journalists feel that this is a missed opportunity and it negatively affects the game. It is said the game is missing something. Except with the absence of any direct political correlations or commentary, the game can actually be more Evergreen. Evergreen means content that is not time-specific or time-sensitive. It's always fresh or watchable and playable in this case. It's not a holiday special or something seasonal. Plus, the focus on the game obviously shines more on the gameplay and the loot, etc. Would any game really be better if reactions to the game and the gameplay experience included constant reminders to be woke? Or having exposition written by political activists who most likely, as history has shown, won't even buy or play the game. Of course not. Would you like to know more? That's the rant out of the way. This game definitely has in-depth and satisfying world building and incredibly detailed environmental storytelling. There is an abundance of detail in the environment and throughout the entire city of DC. It's almost a sensory overload at times, in that I mean it's realistic enough that, I mean, my god, what an incredibly grim and depressing sight this game illustrates. This game illustrates possibly the most grim future landscape I've ever seen. It's like the detail and realism factor of dying light on a much larger scale. That's my opinion, at least. There are body bags everywhere, littered everywhere. Every single one of these body bags is a grim reminder. These people are strangers, yet it's just incredibly sad and difficult to process that 90% of humanity has been wiped out. Empty hospital beds are scattered inside and outside, suggesting absolutely no one was prepared enough to deal with green poison, and attempts to defend against it were totally futile. Wildlife, including stray doggos all over. This game sometimes is so close to an earth with no human species left at all, it even gets quiet enough on the streets to be believable. Except obviously you have fanatical crazy rogue factions that are fighting and carving up the city for their own. Also with some of the NPCs in the game, who are your allies, you certainly feel completely alone from time to time. Exploring DC in The Division 2 is rewarding and compelling almost more than any other game I've played, and I've played all the fallouts. For any genre of video game, the loot in The Division 2 is generous. AF. Yes, it is. It's impossible not to trip over loot in this game when you're not even trying to loot. This game's loot system is Toys R Us or Circuit City going on a business sale style. I mean, really. Rest in peace, Toys R Us. I will never grow up, and I will always be a Toys R Us kid. The combat is fluid. It's easy to pick up and master very quickly. There isn't as much combat variety as an MMORPG, but that would be totally unnecessary. The combat is varied enough that progressing and experimenting with combat styles in this game can change your gameplay quite a bit. There is plenty of motivation to do projects and consistently improve settlements and liberate more control points. You as a single player really are, and you do feel like the savior of a whole city. Would you like to know more? Some problems arise during the end of the main story missions for me. There is a lack of closure and information at the end of the game. It's altogether kind of anticlimactic after the defeat of every stronghold. What was the significance of every boss? That was only paper thin, really, in the game. You could easily sweep every stronghold not caring or knowing anything about your targets. Also, the motivation for killing almost thousands of each faction was not enough, especially since 90% of the rest of the world is already dead. I don't want to kill any more people at a certain point. I know this is a looter shooter, 
but at a certain point, I don't want to kill any more people in this scenario or in this world. Why couldn't I recruit anyone from a faction to rejoin civilization or what remains of it at a settlement or a control point? I couldn't bring anyone from a faction to a settlement and change their mind to help the residents at all? Apparently not. I just have to mow down somewhat arbitrary enemies for somewhat arbitrary reasons, so that DC feels even more like a ghost town. The sense of any timeline for the backstory is sort of convoluted and not illustrated well enough in the game. Obviously in The Collapse and in Tom Clancy's universe from his novels, any timeline could be explained perfectly since there is way more time and information in a novel to do so. I just found myself frequently wondering, how the hell did it all go this wrong in only seven months. I get Murphy's Law, okay? I get Murphy's Law. Clearly it went rampant and took effect everywhere. But how did every chain of command, every protocol, every precaution fail here around the world? The backstory that you do find in the game isn't enough. The echoes, the audio recordings, and other things that you can collect and loot are really interesting and it's another great thing to collect, but they only complete what seems like half of a jigsaw puzzle. Overall, I'm still addicted to the grind in this game because it really doesn't feel like a grind at all, and that, that can be a really important thing to get right. It seems really selfish and odd that a character, an agent, anybody, cares so much about loot in this game even though everyone died a horrible death to smallpox and even though your character is tasked with saving almost the entire government and you're almost single-handedly trying to rebuild the city from scratch but it is a looter shooter and this game's loot system is generous once again and i am a hoarder i am a hoarder in real life i could be on one of those hoarding tv shows so I'm going to collect the loot in this game, and I'm going to take anything it throws at me. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned by hitting that sub and bell button, and I'll see you in my next video.